Welcome to this top event FTA tutorial. In this video, we'll construct and evaluate a fault tree for the monopropellant propulsion system of a small spaceflight vehicle in top event FTA. The fault tree that we'll evaluate is included in the monopropellant propulsion system example. You can find this example in the Fault Tree Handbook with aerospace applications. The monopropellant propulsion system of a small spaceflight vehicle is shown in this figure. The system provides thrust while the vehicle is in orbit. In this example, there are three general system failure modes that can be assessed. One, the system's failure to provide propulsion when commanded. Two, the system's inadvertent firing. And three, the continued system firing after the system has been commanded to shut off. In this example, we'll discuss the fault tree for failure mode three. This is the fault tree that we will construct and evaluate in top event FTA. For a detailed explanation of the fault tree, please review the fault tree handbook with aerospace applications. First, we'll select the Home tab, then we'll create a new project. We can now start the fault tree construction. To simplify the presentation, we'll start by defining the failure probabilities. Let's select the models. Here, we'll add a new model. The name of the new model is IV. We'll include the component and the failure mode in the model description. The description is Isolation Valve. Failure to close when EMF is removed. The failure probability of this model is a constant 2 times 10 to the negative fourth power. The next model, K, has the following description. Relay switch. Failure to return when EMF is removed. Its failure probability is 3 times 10 to the negative third power. The description for K6 is timer relay switch. Failure to time out and its failure probability is 2 times 10 to the negative second power. Let's add S7. Its description is manual switch, operational failure to open switch, and its failure probability is 1 times 10 to the negative second power. Finally, the description for S8 is manual switch, failure to open when commanded, and its failure probability is 5 times 10 to the negative fifth power. Let's select the fault tree to begin the fault tree construction. To edit the top event, we'll click the Settings button. The top event G1 is Thruster supplied with propellant after thrust cutoff. The top event will occur if the isolation valve IV3 remains open after cutoff and the isolation valve IV2 remains open after cutoff. The gate type is AND. G1 has two inputs. Let's add the two intermediate events. This is the intermediate event G3, and its description is isolation valve IV2 remains open after cutoff. The intermediate event G2 has the description isolation valve IV3 remains open after cutoff. The event G2 will occur if EMF continues to be supplied to IV3 after cutoff or IV3 fails to close after cutoff. The gate type is OR. Let's add an intermediate event and a basic event. The basic event E2 has the description primary failure of IV3 to close after cutoff. To edit the failure probability, we'll select the Failure Probability Model tab. The model is IV. G4 is the intermediate event, and its description is EMF continues to be supplied to IV3 after cutoff. G4 has two inputs. Let's add an intermediate event and a basic event. The basic event E3 has the description primary failure of K5 relay to open when EMF is removed. The model is K. G6 is the intermediate event, 
and its description is, EMF continues to be supplied to K5 after cutoff. The intermediate event, G6, also has two inputs. The basic event, E4, has the description, primary failure of K3 to open after cutoff. The model is K. The intermediate event, G7, has the description, EMF continues to be supplied to K3 after cutoff. The intermediate event, G7, occurs if the emergency switch, S3, fails to open after cutoff, and K6 fails to open after cutoff. The gate type is AND. The inputs to G7 will be used in another part of the fault tree. To reuse the inputs, we'll create two new fault trees. Let's select the project and add a new fault tree. The name of the top event is G8, and its description is Emergency Switch S3 Fails to Open After Cutoff. Let's add two basic events. E8 is the first event. Its description is Primary Failure of S3 to Open When Commanded. The model is S8. E7 is the second event. Its description is Operational Failure of S3 to Open When Commanded. The model is S7. We'll add another fault tree. The name of the top event is G9, and its description is Primary Failure of K6 to Open After Cutoff. G9 has two inputs. The first is E5. Its description is, Primary Failure of K6 to Open After Timing Out. The model is K. The second input is E6. Its description is, Primary Failure of K6 Timer to Time Out. The model is K6. Let's return to the main fault tree. We'll add two transfer end gates to the intermediate event, E7. The first transfer end will be linked to G8. The second will be linked to G9. Let's continue with G3. It has two inputs. Let's add an intermediate event and a basic event. The basic event, E1, has the description, Primary Failure of IV2 to Close After Cutoff. The model is IV. The intermediate event G5 has the description EMF continues to be supplied to IV2 after cutoff. The gate type is AND. Let's add two transfer end gates to G5. The first is linked to E8. The second is linked to G9. We have finished the construction of the fault tree. Let's evaluate the fault tree. With Top Event FTA, both qualitative and quantitative evaluations can be performed on a fault tree. We can use the BDD method or the classical minimal cut sets method. First, let's evaluate the fault tree with the BDD method. Here we have the fault tree evaluation. The top event unavailability is 0.00023773. The calculated value is exact. No approximation is involved because we used the BDD method. In the bottom panel, we can see the unavailability time course. The top event unavailability has a constant value because all the failure probabilities are constant. Let's select the Minimal Cut Sets tab. Here we can see that there are seven minimal cut sets. If we select G2, we can see its minimal cut sets. Top Event FTA evaluates all the nodes in the fault tree. Here we have the minimal cut set of G3, and here that of G5. Let's select the top event, then we'll select the Importance Factors tab. Here we have the importance factors of G1. 
If we select G2, we see its importance factors. The same applies to G3. Let's select the top event. Let's select the minimal cut sets. Here we have a more detailed view. In this view, we can apply filters and export the data to Excel. We have evaluated the fault tree with the BDD method. Let's change the name of the evaluation. Let's select the main fault tree. Now we'll create another evaluation. We'll use the classical minimal cut sets method for this evaluation. Now let's create the evaluation. Here we have the classical method evaluation. With the classical method, the values are approximated by rare event approximation. We can compare the results of the classical method with the results of the BDD method and see that they are similar. Thanks for watching this top event FTA tutorial.